Hello everybody, so today I'm doing a new episode of Versus. Thank you to everyone that has watched the Versus series so far. My King Kong uh, 1933 vs King Kong 2005 is one of my most viewed videos and I really appreciate that people have been enjoying the Versus series. So we've already done King Kong, so today we are doing another kaiju, talking about another kaiju, and that is Godzilla 1954 vs Godzilla 2014. So many of you are going to be like, hey Luke, why are you not comparing it to other Godzilla films, like all the Versus films and Destroyer Monsters and all those type of films. Um, I'm talking about Godzilla 1954 because I saw Godzilla 1954 again the other day. I've seen it many times, but I saw it at Pritchard sure Cinema. They're doing Monster Mondays at the moment, and they showed it there. And when I was watching it, I was like, this actually has many of the same subject matters and stuff and sort of character developments as the 2014 one, and that's why I really wanted to speak about these. So let's first start with 1954 and the things that it does, and then we go on to the 2014 one and speak about things that are very similar. So Godzilla, or Godzilla, because um, it's a Japanese film, which is directed by Ishiro um, Honda, who also directed Destroyer Monsters, uh, Godzilla, King of, King of the Monsters, and also King uh, Godzilla vs uh, Mothra as well. He yeah he did many of these films. But this is the first one that he did and is known as the father of Godzilla. So Godzilla 1954. I've got the computer here, so I'm just I've done my research and stuff to talk about things. Was first it was made mainly because of um, they didn't know how to do their ideas at first. And it was mainly about uh, an event, something that happened in Japan with Lucky Dragonfire, which is a ship that was hit by a nuclear um, nuclear fallout, and that is why he wanted to make the film because he wanted to show of what nuclear bombs and things can do and how much of an effect they can have. And the, with this film, Godzilla is woken because of bombs and nuclear bombs and he is woken from the sea because this is something that happens, explosions happen in the sea and he is woken. Godzilla in this one, in the 1954 one, he isn't known really as the hero like he was known in future films where he's fighting other monsters and helping sort of in ways him that he's fighting monsters and he's destroying cities and stuff but he, he in this he is just known for destroying, going about with his atomic breath and going mad with that and setting everything on fire, setting the whole city on fire, and he is yeah just more of just destroying from him. Now with the characters, we have the scientist that doesn't want them to destroy Godzilla. When they talk about destroying Godzilla with bombs and stuff and with trying to kill Godzilla, he doesn't want them to kill Godzilla. He wants to keep this thing alive. He wants them to keep this creation, this um, discovery alive and doesn't want them to kill it. But then you also have the, the government and stuff that are talking about how Godzilla was woken up and stuff and like how there's people in, there's a whole courtroom conversation scene and then this woman's like, I think we should tell everyone about what's going on in Godzilla. And then there's a guy there that's like, no, we can't tell people. We can't tell them what's going on. We we can't. We have to hide this away from people. I'm going to get onto that in the 2014 one, how, how that compares. But there's there's that. And then there is the character that has, he has created a bomb, which is, because Godzilla is in the sea. I'm doing spoilers right now. Just, if you haven't seen Godzilla, then I'm doing spoilers in this. I should have said that earlier on, um, but he is creating a bomb which when it is dropped into the ocean it will take away all the oxygen and will just, it will kill fish, yes, but it will also kill Godzilla as well because Godzilla is in the ocean. Now with him saying, no I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put this bomb in to the ocean because it could create something really bad and could do something really bad and right with there it's talking more again about the things that happened in real life with the nuclear bombs. So with Godzilla, it's got the the scientists not wanting to be killed, the government wanting to hide it away, um, the person that's created something to try and get rid of this monster, and the one that, the person that's going to be the one hero to save everyone. Um, and then a fi there's also a final line where they're like, oh. Um, Godzilla will return and stuff. Um, there's, there's that um, line there. So, and but Godzilla is is a, someone that is destroying the city. He's a kaiju, the monster that is destroying the city, and isn't really known as a hero. He's just destroying everything. 
So that is Godzilla 1954. Now, Godzilla 2014, directed by Gareth Edwards. This is a bit different than um, Godzilla 1954. Now, it's it's with Godzilla um, 20, 2014. Um, this one has Godzilla fighting two monsters, Muto, um, Muto's, Muto's, is it Muto's? Yeah, Muto's, uh, massive, um, unidentified terrestrial organism, but it's not terrestrial anymore, it's flying, and that is a line they said in the film. Now, with the things that are similar with this film, you have Brian Cranston, um, his character, which is, get the name, so I should have been saying the name, which is Joe, Joe Brody. He is someone that knows they're hiding something and he wants to find out what they're hiding. Now with the 1954 one, that is the, the similar thing there. With the government not wanting people to know what is being hidden, that is in this one, in the 2014 one, with Brian Cranston's character saying, you are hiding something and it's going to send us back to the Ice Age and, and all these things. He knows they're hiding something and once again, the government wants to hide it away from the world and you have, when it first happened, you have the news reports of an earthquake happening and then when the Muto um, escapes, they then just say that there was a, a massive fire that happened because they don't want to, they want to hide it again, they want to hide it away from people. Um, with the hero this time, the one hero is Ford Brody, played by Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, and he is with the hero with um, Godzilla 954. You have the guy that's the hero that's going to put the bomb inside the ocean, but is going he because in 954 one he does kill himself because he stays in the ocean to let the let the oxygen bomb off and it kills him as well. But you have with Aaron Taylor Johnson's character. Um, he stays on a boat with the bomb because the bomb he can't disarm it or anything because of what the Mutos have done to it. And that is with the one hero. That's something that's similar to the other film because there's the one hero trying to save the city and with this one bomb um, wanting to blow it up. So it will, yeah, so it will destroy these monsters. Godzilla, though, in the 2014 one, is the hero. He is not destroying the city he is there to to help to destroy these monsters and um, even if people do see him as a, a scary th monster at first then but he he shows them he's not scary and that he's going to help them and then at the end he is the the king of monsters we have the scientist again um, played by um, Ken Watanabe um, he plays Dr. Ishiro Ishiro Shir Shirazawa? I'm guessing they wanted to, like, you know, because Ishiro Honda, they sort of wanted to do that as homage there with that name right there. Um, but he is a scientist that says he doesn't want them to destroy Godzilla. No, don't blow him up. Don't get tanks to destroy him. And with them talking about 1954, now they're not talking back when he says we woke something up in 1954. It's sort of, yeah, going back to because the first film's out, but it's also speaking about the events that happened in 1954. Um, with Godzilla 2014, it also wants to pick up again on all these horrible disasters that happened with nuclear bombs and stuff and showing the effects of what nuclear bombs can do. And it speaks about um, Hir um, Hiroshima, Hiroshima? Um, which was hit by nuclear bombs and at, on, on August... Wait, where is it? Yeah, it was hit on August 6th, 1945 at 8.15. That's why uh, Dr. That's why Kim Watanabe's uh, character has a watch on that um, stops at 8.15. So once again, this film wants to pick up on the effects of nuclear bombs and what they can truly do and what they can wake up and things. And with, with the Mutos, they are things that get power from like nuclear power and from electricity and things. So, the Godzilla is the hero here, and the Mutos are the enemy that needs to be destroyed. So, these films, let me compare them completely. So, the two, the differences, though, are Godzilla just destroying everything, just, just destroying the whole city in the 1954 one. 2014 one, Godzilla is the hero, does destroy some of the city, but also wants to help and kill the Mutos. Um, the atomic breath is in... Um, 
is in Godzilla 1954, and then it appears very late on in um, in 2014, but it's awesome when it does appear. Um, there's a scientist that doesn't want them to kill Godzilla. There is the guy that, that knows they're hiding something, the government is hiding something again. There is the hero with the bomb and wanting to help everyone. Um, kill it with him dying. Well, Aaron Taylor Johnson's character doesn't die because he gets taken away in a helicopter. But um, there's the hero again, yes, wanting to help. And with me comparing right here, this is something that a lot of people complained about with saying, hey, Godzilla was only in the 2014 one for like 18 minutes. If you've seen this, Godzilla's in this for about 18 minutes as well. So if you complained about how long Godzilla was in the film for, then you haven't seen the other films out, or you haven't seen you haven't seen Godzilla 1954 because Godzilla is hardly in the 1954 one. Yes, he does appear and does get a, a, a lot of screen time brown at the end. But if you look at the times completely with both films, it's like 18, 20 minutes both times. And with the versus films, even Godzilla was only in those for not very long as well. Was in those for about like well, he would be fighting monsters but he in the, in many of the others he would appear quite late on so if you complain about how long Godzilla was in the film for you definitely haven't seen the other things so with normally the verses I say which one is better but this time I don't really think I can say which one is better because they are very different from each other Godzilla 1954 is a man in a suit and I still think it, it's so fun to watch that and with the with the planes firing fireworks at one point it's so fun to watch that Godzilla 2014 is more the special effects that are awesome and amazing and look great for the film and really do stand out um, but they're very different films because in they in 1951 he's destroying the city in the 2014 one he's a hero and he's destroying the other monsters the mutos um, but both Godzillas, I, I love both these Godzilla films. I think it goes, it goes this, and then it's Godzilla twenty fourteen for me, and then, then the other versus um, films are a few of the other ones. I, I haven't really ever probably thought about it, but we also just we forget about nineteen ninety eight. We forget about that version. But that's all for my versus video today. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you think there's anything else that um, has to compare these Godzilla films together. Don't want to do that with my hands. <laughs> send the comments down below. But if you enjoyed this versus video, what would you like to see for the next versus video? That is all for today. Thank you very much, and I shall see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.